Good morning, everybody. And good afternoon, I should say as well. Thank you so much for joining us on this fifth session of this nine part digital strategy for Caribbean food SMEs. Um, this series is being hosted by the International Trade Centers Alliance for Action, Caribbean Export Development Agency, funded by the European Union, the OACPS, CARI Forum, the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. This is the UK Trade Partnership Project. My name is Natasha Edwin Walcott. I'm the sen Senior Advisor for Competitiveness and Export Promotion at Caribbean Export, and I am delighted to be hosting you today. A strong digital presence is a must have for food companies to engage with consumers and buyers and increase their sales. As part of this engagement, B2B interactions are increasingly shifting to an exclusively virtual space. Digital marketing, of course, becomes critical. Your website, your social media accounts are now your shop window to the world. Mm -hmm. So even before trying your products, customers and buyers need to get a taste of who you are, what is your brand, your brand story, what you offer uh, that your competition does not. So the objective of this masterclass series is to give you practical tools and expert advice on how to develop your or strengthen your digital strategy. So each webinar, we've had four webinars thus far. Today's um, the fifth one. It will focus on a targeted aspect of online presence. And today we will be exploring social media for marketing. And the topics that we will look at today, social media platform hacks, low budget tools, putting your likes per post into practice, and third-party tone of voice, influencer marketing versus brand strategy. And so we are so delighted to have the Digital Works Agency with us, with Imar McManus and Emily McKay. I'm so sorry, Ema, if, if I had the name, if I pronounced the name that um, was incorrectly. <laughs> so over the next hour, the ladies will essentially go through um, social mar marketing, social media for marketing, and um, really and truly, we're just so, so happy to have you guys have your expertise. And we really hope that the, the firms who have joined us today can take advantage of your presence over the next hour. So some housekeeping, of course, you would have been told already that the session is being recorded. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put that in the Q&A um, panel. And we also invite you to check out Caribbean Exports YouTube channel where the previous sessions have been uploaded as well as, as this one and those going forward. So thank you so much and over to you ladies. Thanks very much, Natasha. Good morning, everyone. I'm gonna share my screen now and hopefully you all can see that. Uh, please let me know if you can. Great to see some familiar names again popping up. Yes, we can, go ahead. Amazing. So everyone, as Natasha mentioned, we are going to cover social media and we know that over the last couple of weeks you've had an all-encompassing approach to your marketing your branding we covered websites we covered canva iphone photography etc um we know that a lot of you guys use instagram and for this hour we've sort of made a bit of a pivot and we actually want to show you guys how best to use linkedin and facebook LinkedIn is going to be so, so important for you personally and your company when it comes to potentially exporting and reaching the potential buyers that you guys want to target. So we will cover uh, general aspects of Facebook and LinkedIn. I'll actually just quickly talk you through them. You guys know us by now. Um, so during this workshop, we're going to cover the benefits of Facebook, what to include on your Facebook page as a business owner, benefits of LinkedIn, how to use, utilize it, some really good content examples from social media, and also like some tips and tricks as to how best to promote your business across Facebook and across LinkedIn. Um, some of you might have a Facebook page yet, and some of you might not have a LinkedIn page, but we'll ask those questions as we, as we go. And as always, guys, um, especially with the Irish accent, if I speak too fast, don't hesitate to tell me to slow down and ask myself and Emily any questions at all. And, and as per usual, we'll actually answer them as we go. And if we've time at the end, we'll cover all of them, uh, which, which, which we've managed to in the last couple of weeks. But um, look, feel free to ask as many questions as you want and we hope you enjoy the session. 
Cool. So to start, um, who has a Facebook page for their business already? If you do, can you kind of write that in the chat or even if you don't write that in the chat as well, because that will help us as we go through. Mm. So I do. So lots of you already do. That's great. Excellent. Does, is there anyone here that doesn't? No. OK, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Bob. So the benefits of Facebook for your business. Um, those of you who already have Facebook pages will know some of these, but 2.8 billion people still use Facebook. So people might sway towards Instagram and other social media platforms these days, but Facebook is still a really, really key platform to have um, just because of the amount of users and the amount of reach that you can, you can get from your content and uh, advertising your business on there. Um, so it builds brand awareness and trusts your customers. Um, it boosts your SEO and engagement with your, with your brand. It connects you with your followers. Um, it has really helpful metrics that you can analyze um, and it drives traffic to your website. So all of these are really, really important um, reasons to have a Facebook page. Oh, something went very fast there. Sorry about that, folks. So here's a quick Facebook checklist. Um, for those of you that, that already have that. So do you have your profile um, photo size for mobile and desktop? Um, so how many of you use um, Facebook from your mobiles as well as your desktop? Let us know in the chat box because that would be helpful as well. Um, a cover photo also size for your mobile and desktop um, and an up-to-date contact information and description. So this is really, really important. Yeah. Similar to how we talked about Google My Business in a previous session, uh, this sort of information on your Facebook page is really, really important. So straight away, if people type you in, they'll be able to see where you're based, uh, what sort of company you are, um, and your kind of opening hours or where they can find your products. Yeah. Um, so those of you who don't already have a Facebook page, it's really, really easy to set up. So you go to this address here. We'll be able to share these slides with you, I think. So yep. um, you can just use this link if you don't have one. Um, and you actually go through a personal uh, Facebook page to set one up. So um, in order to set up a, a Facebook business page, you do have to use uh, your own personal Facebook profile. Um, and you enter all your information. Um, it's really, really easy to set up. Yeah. So which type of content guys like what do you currently share on your facebook page about your business i know we went over this a little bit last last week say something about your website content but like generally what do you guys post in the day to day on your across your facebook page about your business we've looked at some of your pages as well want to pop in the chat promotions products amazing product awareness yes Special products, nice. News and upcoming events, excellent. COVID, that's really good. That's great. Guys, something about social media as well is, is that when we're posting about our brands, we should always try strike a balance of talking about ourselves versus talking about relevant news in the industry, just to show that we're super in the know and also that we're just not constantly self-promoting. So have a think about that. Think about things going on in the local area. Think about something. If someone on your team has celebrated something, they've they've run a half marathon, they've they've done something for charity. Um, start breaking down your content into those types of promotions as well, just to show there's a there's a, a group of humans behind the business. Menus love that. I heard you. I love I love that honesty, Shondell. You've been really busy. I know this is the thing. We all get really really busy, and this is where. If you have products, guys, if you have, let's say we're going to talk about the speciality, the chocolate, and you have a chocolate with three specific flavors. Something about social media is that we spend so much time scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and we don't actually remember what we've seen. We don't recall anything that we've seen. So don't be afraid to repost things and write them slightly differently that you posted two weeks ago, because the chances of somebody remembering or even having seen that are very, very slim. So guys, think about all the content you have, you know, information on products, news, 
uh, World Coconut Day is coming up, like things like that, or we, or we might have missed it, but it's one of the national days we could talk about. Um, don't ever be afraid to just repost, you know, content that's that's what we call evergreen. So evergreen means it will never go out of date. It's not news, it's not topical, it's recipes, it's ingredients, it's information on products. Um, so yeah, that was just a little quick tip for you there. So what should I share on Facebook? Oh, we have a question, I will just refocus. Love that, Felicia. We focus especially on how to save the environment. And I would imagine that if you go into your analytics, this type of content would probably perform better than just product promotions. So well done, that's amazing. Um, so what should I share on Facebook? Absolutely, recipes, meet the team, testimonials and reviews, guys. If you've had an international buyer or someone trying out the product, don't be afraid to use their reviews. Of course, your photography, your PR pieces, video content, informational content, new flavors, etc. Of course, competitions and giveaways are a good one as well. Uh, you've already answered the anything else, so we'll we'll move on swiftly. So here are a couple of examples of good pieces of Facebook content that we've seen. So if you look at Follow Your Heart, they talk about new product announcements. Five guys talk about, they share a lot of user generated content. And then also another type of content is your awards and your PR. So like guys, if you've gotten some sort of stamp or recognition, make sure to be shouting about this on your Facebook page. And these types of content, like this brand, Follow Your Heart, they got the, the, the best vegan cheese or they were shortlisted at the Vegan Food and Living Awards. You can talk about this as many times as you want. This isn't a piece of content. And this is, this is the, the point we're going to really get across today is that when you have content on Facebook, you need to share that same piece of content multiple times. Otherwise, people will just forget or they'll miss it, etc. So don't be afraid to keep constantly talking about the about similar things to your audience because it will work really well for you. Uh, some other good pieces of content again. So an animation as well. Guys, you can make these short snippets and these branded pieces all in Canva. So I know we did the quick demonstration on it last week. So if you look at the, the image on the right hand side, this was actually a giveaway. This was done in Canva. So if you're going to do a competition with another brand, just use Canva. Um, and guys, we're just conscious of time here, but you'll get these slides and the copy that we write that we've written for this post here in the top left, Emily actually <laughs> has written this one. Um, so this is a perfect example of a really strong piece of copy. So calling all avocado lovers, what we were doing was uh, launching a new avocado vegan mayonnaise for our client, Follow Your Heart. And we said, we're delighted to announce the launch of our newest product here in the UK, Follow Your Heart's Avocado Oil Veganese this year. This delicious alternative has been blended, uh, has been blended with oil extracted from ripe, oil extracted from ripe avocados and is bound to become a family favorite. Who can't wait to try this? So calling all avocado lovers, there's a call to action. Who can't wait to try this? There's a question. Available now at the Vegan Kind Supermarket and coming to Planet Organic very soon. So now what we've done is we've posted and we've tagged the other companies. So every single time, guys, you talk about a product on Facebook, make sure that you tag them. Um, uh, Joanne, yes, you can absolutely get the slides from pre previous webinars, no problem. You'll get all these slides as well. Like, guys, what we want to do is make this in this hour like, 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 a, like a, um, a document that you can just refer back to for good content examples, good ideas, etc. Um, so then we've got blogs, of course, linking back to your website. Your blog is very important to be on your website for your search engine optimization that we spoke about last week. Um, and then, of course, competitions. Always try to do a competition maybe every couple of weeks just to put your product in front of new audiences. So if you have um, a specific brand and you, you know, okay, let's say you're selling, just say, for example, you have one of the coffee companies, actually. And you guys team up with a maybe a cacao brand like maybe you could mix the cacao into the coffee and make it a chocolate flavor so so just make sure that there's synergy between all the brands when you're when you're collaborating and you both will reach each other's facebook pages this is the point of we this is why we do giveaways because we want to get put in front of other people's followers and then they get our brands new customers um so posting content so on Facebook, you can obviously, a lot of us just post and we don't really think about how best we could actually use the tools. We're guilty of it ourselves. But see here when it goes to, when you click on draft a post on Facebook, there are actually loads of options that you can use for your business to talk about milestones, 
um, a feeling, you know, do you land a new um, retailer, for example? So what, what could you guys use out of these guys? Like which features would you pick here to write a piece of content and celebrate something on your, on your Facebook page? Let's look at the chat. I love the idea of supporting a nonprofit as well. I think that's amazing. So guys, if any of you are doing that, make sure that you're talking about it. So anyone, any ideas of what you could click these buttons for and what you could talk? I have an idea. You could use a poll and you could actually ask for feedback on a specific product, mm -hmm. a milestone. Yeah, what sort of milestone would you like to talk about, say, Felicia? Would it be like a new, a, a new, a new customer, a new product coming, maybe 10 years in business? Sold, sold our 100th or our 500th or our 50th product awards. Yes, love it. So guys, really when you look at Facebook, you can actually, if you look at all of these, you don't need all of them, you can use three or four of them, but straight away, you actually have content. And this is the thing, so many of us think, oh, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to write, I don't have content. Facebook is actually giving you content ideas here. So just make sure you have a look at this and always, um, always utilize it as best you can. Directions, yeah. So as Emily mentioned, then what we do is we're, um, we're gonna look at insights. Does anyone actually look at their insights on, on Facebook currently? Occasionally, we look, no, nice. We generally at DW, we look at insights like on a Monday and a Friday. And what we'll do is just write a report, put it on a spreadsheet and compare them week on week. So for those of you who don't know actually how to find your insights, you just land on your Facebook page. It should look something like this. You click insights and then on the next page, you should be able to see the, the activity on your post. This isn't actually a screenshot from our page. Um, this is just one we, we pulled off Google, but you can see your followers, your likes, your reach, your page views, etc. We'd highly recommend looking at this as much as possible. Um, we understand that you guys are busy, but just having a glance over it, it really will tell you if your content is working or not. Um, something we haven't included on this just in the interest of time is ads and like boosting and promoting posts. So if you want more information on that, just contact us after this um, webinar or during it, and we'll make sure to send you information on that. Um, but guys, check your insights. It's so important. And I know sometimes we're even scared to check the insights because we're like, oh, I don't really want to see if it's performing well or not, but it's the only way to actually see if it works. Uh, Wendy, you did a boost last week and was overwhelmed with calls. Amazing. On Facebook, guys, with Facebook ads, you can have um, spend a very little amount of money and reach as many people as possible. Just in the interest of time, we haven't covered that on this, but you know what, we'll send you information after or answer any questions you have. So here are Facebook recommendations. Um, so organic reach is quite limited. So organic is where you post a post without putting any kind of money spend behind it. So anything that isn't an ad or a, or a boost to post. Um, so nowadays, it is very limited. Um, so don't be afraid to post more frequently than you normally would. Um, so we'd say four to six times a week um, would be kind of the appropriate amount to post. Um, aim to post content that will encourage people to click, watch your comments. So rather than just putting a photo up that kind of doesn't really have a very good caption, make sure you're putting a CTA. So like either a link to your website or a phone number or um asking a question for example um because those posts will get a lot more engagement than uh, just kind of like a comment or a, a sentence about an image for example okay. um to get to get your facebook page kind of more followers if you feel like you haven't got that many likes um if, you can invite your friends to like your page to get started and um, we've done this with like clients before we've done it with ourselves um it's really if you've got a couple of hundred um, followers on your Facebook anyway, if you invite all of them straight away, that kind of gives you more kind of recognition um, on your own business profile. 
Um, and invest in a Facebook ads budget to enhance the, enhance the reach. So this is something that we haven't really delved into hugely, but you don't have to have a huge, huge budget, but we would recommend both boosting, sorry, a couple of posts here and there uh, to just get that reach enhanced a little bit more. Yeah, and just one thing on that, to learn more about Facebook ads, they have a section called Facebook Blueprint. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have rebranded it, but it's the A to Z of Facebook ads. And another trick for you guys that we didn't actually pop into um, this meeting is if you want to see if your competitors are doing Facebook ads, you go to, you Google Facebook ad library and you can put in any Facebook page in the world and Facebook will show you all of the ads that they're running. Uh, the, the names are in the chat, but again, if you're unsure, you need, need links, just let us know. So here's a couple of things when you're going to create content that we would uh, recommend remembering. So the words are engage, educate, and excite. So the engage part is sharing a story of how your business got started. We've done this with so many food brands and people are really interested to hear, especially if you've got a bit of a story of how your business idea came about. Sharing this in either a video, like a selfie video, or um, even just kind of text on an image. Uh, people are so interested in this. Um, show how you give back to the community. So um, if you are kind of partnered with a charity or there's, for example, some businesses that we've worked with, if they're really into sustainability, they might grow a tree for every sale they have or something like that. Um, people really engage with those kind of extra things um, about your business. Um, take people on a virtual tour of your business using photos or videos. So what we mean by this is almost make your followers feel like they know like the inside and behind the scenes of your business. For example, even just um, say, if you've got any pics from production or something, just putting like a behind the scenes caption up, uh, people almost think that they're seeing something kind of sneaky or behind the scenes and they really, really engage with that sort of thing. We've seen that with so many clients, uh, especially food ones. Mm. Um, and then educate. So explain what makes your product or service different or special. So list out your USPs of your of your product, uh, where they where your project product sort of originates. If you're using any special ingredients that you can only find in a certain area, um, that's that's really really interesting for people to see. Um, take people behind the scenes of your store or business. So if you do have a shop. Or if it is purely online, you can just do uh, maybe have some sort of um, behind the scenes of where your props are grown or it depends what kind of uh, company you have um, and show us how to use your products. So this is where we've shown things like recipes rather than just showing um, this is my product, show how you can use. So little videos of um, let's say you've got a sauce what kind of recipes you've used the source in um, and giving your followers a little bit more extra information than just showing your product on its own. Um, and then excite. So keeping your followers engaged by exciting them, announcing a new product or service. So for example, if you've got a new flavor, like we, we showed you a previous um, that avocado post, that's trying to get the, uh, the followers excited. Um, to sharing promotions or sales. So this is competitions, or if you've got anything that's on offer on your website or a retailer's putting it on offer, um, this is all good things to show your followers. Cause again, it seem, it feels like to them, they're, you're, you're kind of giving them the inside of an offer. If you, you know, if you, if you get it this month, you'll get an offer here, for example. Um, and then engage in topics that matter to your community. So, uh, dependent on where your product um, and what your product is. If there is kind of a base for it, for example, like a little village somewhere or a, a town, talk about kind of the things that are really kind of trending topics in that town. So if there is a particular product, for example, coconuts for, or um, chocolate, talk about kind of the trends, industry news um, and any kind of local news as well. Mm -hmm. 100%. So that kind of that covers the Facebook session. But if we left anything off in terms of content ideas, always let us know, guys, and we're happy to 
supply more information. So who has a LinkedIn personal and business page? Please, can you guys pop in the chat? Yes, amazing. Personal page only, okay. LinkedIn personal account. Okay. <laughs> I think we've got a raised hand as well, Eva. Should we oh, have it? It's Gabrielle. Gabrielle, do you want to take yourself off mute? I think we might have to take take Gabrielle off mute. Um, is there a way she's off mute. You off mute, Gabrielle? Oh yeah. Oops. Oops. She there? Okay, we might have to. Do it. Emily, you've raised your own hand now. <laughs> Gabrielle, if you wouldn't mind popping your question in the chat, um, because we can't actually hear you or see you, that would be amazing, and we'll cover it ASAP. You know, I, I believe she dropped off. Maybe she had dropped connection off. issues. No yeah. problem at all. We, I hope we didn't scare her off. <laughs> Hi, Denise. Welcome. Um, so LinkedIn business. Okay, great. So guys, some of you have personal pages. Excellent. And some uh, don't have company pages. So. Why do I need a LinkedIn page? LinkedIn is one of, if not the most important B2B platform, guys. You've got your Instagram, you've got your Facebook, you've got your TikToks, but on LinkedIn, you are the face of your business and people buy from people. At the end of the day, you can have the best social media in the world and you can have everything, but it's going to be your reputation online for, to those international buyers that are, they're gonna to wanna to be looking you up seeing you as the thought leader in your industry, in your local area, loads of great content, proud of your products, proud of your heritage and, 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 and everything to do with your brand. So, so really important. And I can't remember who it was last week who spoke about diversity. Um, just made, they made an amazing point. Was it, what was it Denise? I can't remember. But somebody made an amazing point on just like focusing on diversity and promoting diversity in your business, which we all agree was a great point. So why do I need LinkedIn page? Build brand awareness. We want more people to know about us. Networking. So connect and engage with the right people. Guys, you can target all the buyers. You can target people who have businesses like yours who've had some su success. Uh, you can build partnerships and you can cross promote. So for example, what that means is if, you have a, if you're in Barbados and you have a new stockist in Jamaica, Make sure that the buyer who actually bought the product from you and supplied it to the, to the stockist in Jamaica is shouting about that on LinkedIn because that third party endorsement from that buyer is telling your followers and any future buyers, okay, so this buyer was really interested because of X, Y, Z. Think about all those partners you have and all those people who can be talking about your product. Um, of course, it's great for lead generation as well. Um, sorry, my mouse is doing all sorts of things. You can reach your target market as well. So like you can do an advanced search on LinkedIn and you can actually target the exact people who you want to target by, um, by connecting with them. And you can share thought leadership content. So if you are the best chocolate chocolatier in the whole world, you need to be talking about that. Um, guys, we would recommend setting up a LinkedIn business page because the difference with the business page and the personal page is that the business page will be focused on company updates Social media in general is more social. Instagram is fun, Facebook is fun. LinkedIn, people just wanna get down to business. Okay, so you can do two to three updates a week all about the business. And then your personal page that you can direct people from your personal following over to the business page is gonna be more about industry news, uh, obviously product promotions yourself. But, but like Facebook, you need to be talking about um, uh, what's going on in the industry alongside promoting your product. Joanne, I'm just going to quickly read this. I started with a Belize chocolate company page and during the pandemic, I changed it to be more personal and changed the focus of it from chocolate making proofreader and now, okay, no problem, Joanne. We can absolutely help with that. Um, we'll, we'll, Emily will also think about that and we'll, we'll come back to that. But really it's all about guys, your business page is to focus on the business, but your personal page is your personal brand. It's you as the owner of this amazing company and it's the business talking about itself. Um, you also will have, there'll be more power 
in terms of being found if you have a business page and a personal page. So if somebody's looking for a coffee bean supplier in Jamaica or in Barbados or Dominican Republic or Trinidad or wherever, for Guyana, um, the, the more they search for it in your area, if you're appearing on multiple pages, then you'll get found. And that's what we want, guys. We want you to get found. Um, I won't go over all of this, but we have links in at the end of this session as well to show you exactly how to set up the pages. Um, and really cannot recommend enough having a business page, guys. So please all get on that. So what should I share on my company uh, LinkedIn page? So uh, company updates in general, blogs, going back to the website, industry news, trends. So as, as Emily mentioned, if anything was trending, of course, like you guys even will have Carnival or how your product, you know, how you sold loads of products during Carnival, for example, uh, or any content that offers real value to businesses in your, in your industry. Cool. So we've got some content examples here. So um, far left one is a company update from employees. So this is really, really important to do. So for example, if you've got kind of a behind the scenes picture to do, um, like this company here, Vinny, it's a vegan uh, vending machine company. Um, they're doing their Christmas orders in this picture. And this is a real nice kind of insight. Um, Darnish, who's actually written the post, um, is one of the uh, one of the people who works there. Um, he's the chief strategy officer, but he's done a post about Vinny, so then Vinny can reshare it on their business page, uh, which is really great to see. I think one thing to mention about LinkedIn is getting your employees, um, or even if it's just you on your own, posting from your page. Um, so there's some sort of kind of communication. It looks like there's some team. Um, kind of posting, replying to posts, etc. Um, this kind of uh, one here uh, is a PR piece. So follow your heart. We've spoken about them before. Um, they expanded their cheese into a different um, store across the US. Um, so sharing these kind of press, PR, magazine, news pe uh, pieces are really, really important. Um, and then finally on this side is meet the team. So uh, this is the Vinny team. Um, LinkedIn is a really good place uh, to share these sort of um, these sort of posts. So even if you are, say it is just you on your own or you, you are one person, just kind of giving a bit about what, what you do in your kind of role. Um, it gives people a bit about the company when they go onto your page. So it's not just kind of, pushing out the product, um, et cetera. They can see that there's actual humans behind the brand, which is so important. So here's a couple of brands that do it really well. So Innocent Drinks, um, I'm sure some of you've heard of Innocent before. So what they do really well here is they piggyback off different kind of um, calendar days or um, celebrations or kind of, days that they feel like they should talk about so world mental health day is the example that we have here um obviously that's so so important to so many companies um kind of especially in the last couple of years um so them highlighting this is so so important and linkedin is definitely the platform to do that on um i think you could definitely share it on facebook and instagram too but linkedin kind of showing that you've got that sort of um those sort of kind of morals for your company and things like that is so important uh, mm -hmm. when people are viewing them, viewing you on LinkedIn from kind of business perspective. Yeah. Um, I would, do you know what, um, one more point on that as well, which we were talking about earlier. Um, also, by sharing things like World Mental Health Day, you're really showing as well that your, your company, you know, you care about your employees, as Emily said, but that it's a great place to work. Yeah. And a great place to potentially get investment. So if these potential future buyers or future investors see that you've got really good values and morals in your business, like that's gonna increase your clarity and your credibility even more. So content like this resonates really well with everyone. Absolutely. Um, so another example is Pip and Nuts. It's a slightly different um, example, but also a really, really good post to share. So Pip and Nut are the peanut butter company that we were talking about, uh, I think a few weeks ago. So they've done a poll on here. Um, so move over smooth versus crunchy. There's a new peanut butter debate in town. So you can do sort of 
humorous or comedy content on LinkedIn as well. Um, but also, not only is it that, it's also getting some sort of market research from people who obviously follow the brand. Um, and also what you could do is cut out this kind of um, poll and put it on other social media channels, for example, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, if you have it. Um, and just use this as a bit of kind of market research. Yeah. Um, and then Nestle. Um, Nestle is a good example of um, a company that shares a lot of content on LinkedIn um, and also really relevant as well. So they have done a post on Pride Month. They seem to kind of be up with every sort of trend. And again, if someone's landing on your company page and sees that you're kind of in the know with these trends and you're following and what's upcoming and maybe your products are also kind of adapting to this for example they've obviously changed their logo here to the pride colors um that's so so important and linkedin is um the place to show kind of show off what your company does how it adapts um and also how you know how it's seen in the news but also just your team team pictures as well so if you don't have pr like that that's absolutely fine like you can almost be your own pr and uh, mm -hmm. post about yourself um, or get your employees to post on your page yeah love that like if we actually i'm just going to quickly go back because emily made a really good point about Vinny. this here this was just a really simple photograph somebody took on a phone of like all their boxes, their Christmas snack boxes going out. And it was one of their best performing posts because it was so real, so organic. And it showed just a really nice, happy team behind the scenes, no big singing or dancing photo shoot. And this is what people want to see on LinkedIn, your real values, your authenticity, really. Definitely. Um, so we've mentioned planning um, around important dates. You'll see this across the board of big brands, small brands, and if you kind of get to the point where you think, I don't know what to post on any of the social media platforms, um, going to um, an important date, a calendar date, an anniversary of your company, uh, World Food Day, for example, we've got National Caribbean Month, World Coffee Day, World Coconut Day, um, or company birthdays on here, or even people in your team's birthdays. Um, mm -hmm. I saw someone um, in the chat say, is there a calendar um, that you can download these dates? We can send you across one uh, or send a link for one. There's, there's lots of different ones. I guess it would depend on where you're based um, at the moment because some are like US, uh, we have different ones in the UK. Um, so we will send across um, a couple of links for that. Nice one. So um, uh, just going on to this point, so your personal page, so there's really, there's a really good phrase that, that, that we've heard a lot and we use it a lot and it's people's perception of you is their reality of you. So whatever people perceive, they're going to believe. So first impressions count guys, it's the same with your social media, your website. Um, it was Nathan actually a couple of weeks ago that said, you know, people, they have two or three seconds and they make a judgment on you. So like what you want when people land on your personal LinkedIn page on your company page is to see consistency. So at Digital Works, if you go onto LinkedIn now, I really hope we all have the same cover photo. <laughs> but what you'll see is you'll see all the same cover photos. So we bring brands to life online. We've actually some new team members as well who might have updated it yet, but it looks the same as our company page. So straight away, there's brand recognition and everything we do we create brand recognition, our social media content, our LinkedIn posts, our emails, whatever it is, our jumpers, the brand of jumpers that we have. Um, so make sure that you use Canva. And when you use Canva, create yourself a LinkedIn cover photo for your personal page and for your company page. Now, LinkedIn features is a great example um, of storing pieces of older content that you've shared that are really, really important and that you want to highlight at the top of your page. So here's Emily's page and you can see that uh, she's highlighted some posts that we created all about workshops again. Uh, you can feature links to your brand's website or to a specific product on your brand. Uh, you can show people what you do and why you're the expert. Um, and of course you can include your, your thought leadership pieces here. And then going on to thought leadership, I'll just quickly look at a question just in case it was on that. Uh, Joanne, if you want to reach out to buyers, that's a great question. 
So if you want to reach out to buyers and you do want to do like mass reach out and engagement, definitely pay for it. It could be uh, $50 a month, 60. If you can afford it, pay for it. Uh, there's so much you can do organically on LinkedIn. Like it's not with your <coughs> marketing budget, but organically you can still do, you can do a lot, but you just can't connect with like more than 50 people if you, you aren't paying for the paying for the subscription. Um, it's a rolling monthly contract. So if anyone wants to try it, go really hard at it for a month and then stop, uh, you could do that too. Um, so this is just an example of another client of ours um, who wrote a really nice thought leadership piece uh, where we, we drafted the content for him. And what we did was we just made sure that anytime we mentioned somebody's name, so Alexander Cordona, David Hare, uh, Index Ventures, anytime you're talking on LinkedIn, make sure you're tagging people. Now, thought leadership means you're talking about a topic that you know a lot about and you're happy to be sharing it. So guys, if you are a coffee producer, you are an expert. This is the thing. Whatever business you're running, you are an expert in that. So don't be afraid to talk about it. Talk about the journey, as Emily mentioned. Talk about the product benefits, the USPs. Talk about what's going on in the industry. Again, Nathan Patrick from the session a few weeks ago, he was a real advocate for this. He was a real advocate of being proud where you're from and talking about your brand heritage and promoting the brand. And to be honest, when you share thought leadership pieces, like you increase trust and loyalty, you can become an industry leader in the coconut industry, whatever it is, specialty foods, uh, you become the face of your brand again. So yes, while our products sit on social media, we still need a face because this builds the trust with potential buyers, potential investors, all of that. Uh, again, you can manage your online reputation and credibility. You can make authentic connections so you can start being the voice from your brand. Or if you don't have the time because you're so busy doing the day-to-day, -day, just get one of your team to manage it. We manage a lot of personal LinkedIn pages for CEOs of large companies because we know that they're very busy and they just don't have time to, to be doing it themselves. But we, we almost try to get into their heads and we learn as much about them as possible and we and we and we we get approval on everything we do but um yeah so oh sorry so joanne just to go back to your question definitely worth it if you're going to spend the time but if you're not regular linkedin is perfect so uh, moana chocolate is amazing in thought leadership is youtube channel willingness amazing thank you i hope i'm saying wooter i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly but that's a great point Manoa, Manoa chocolate, sorry. Okay, amazing. So if everyone could make note of that, that would be awesome. So guys, finding potential buyers, just if you want to do this or any connection. So number one, it's five simple steps. Number one, find your audience. Number two, connect with them. Number three, share valuable content. If you're going to be connecting with people, you need to, be, you need to have already shared valuable content to them. You don't wanna have a LinkedIn page that doesn't have a profile photo, doesn't have a cover photo, doesn't have company information, and then you're connecting with 50 buyers from the UK, they're gonna be like, who is this person? Um, comment on their posts, give people compliments. People love being told how great they are, how good their content is, we all do. Um, and eventually after you start a chat, slide into their DMs. So finding buyers, how can you do this? So using LinkedIn search feature to find your target group, um, you can literally, Type into the search bar, Tesco buyer, okay? You can find people, you can find posts, you can find jobs, if anybody wants to become a Tesco buyer. Uh, you can find companies, again, that would be Tesco. And when you click into these, uh, you'll be able to do more of an advanced search as well. But we just wanted to give you the overview on how to do it. So Claire Hunter, she's a Tesco buyer. Sophie Taylor, she's a Tesco buyer. But you can narrow this down to area. If you want to target Walmart in the US, whatever it was, just type it into the search bar and all those profiles will come up. However, do not add anyone until you've shared really valuable content or until you've shared information about your, as, as we said there, your amazing products and your shipping information. Because something that might happen, uh, it could potentially happen is if, if I'm a buyer and I'm looking for, okay, a new chocolate brand and I'm looking in the Caribbean, uh, the first thing I'm going to go through so many brands, but the first thing I'm going to want to know is how are they going to get it over here? How fast can they get it there? So guys, if you're talking about how easy it is to package and ship the product, who you work with in terms of fulfillment, all of that, share that type of content, put it into your featured section and then connect with the buyers and then straight away 
but make sure that you've a really you know happy uh, profile photo and a nice cover photo as well because we build that that personal connection um so yeah so definitely have a look at that on linkedin cool so we have some social media tips for you guys so i know someone said earlier that they don't have a lot of time um to spend on their social media um so if you if you don't have enough time um how many of you use a social media scheduling platform um you can get really really cheap options um there's some that are kind of free as well i think uh, we could give you some options and um, this just means that you kind of get a calendar and you pre-schedule that content to go out on certain days etc so you don't have to think about it each day of what you're going to post um, so we obviously do this with lots of brands that we work with and um, so we use like quite a large one that's why i'm not kind of recommending that one probably yeah later.com um would definitely work um so yeah if you if you don't if you don't have time to to kind of just post remotely from your phone or you want to pre-plan what you're posting and um, definitely use one of those um we've got um an example of a app that basically generates hashtags for you so linkedin is a um a platform that you definitely need hashtags to you can use like a couple of them on there um obviously instagram you'll see facebook is less hashtag oriented um mm -hmm. but still this is a really really useful free app to use so it's hashtag hash me um so definitely have a look at that um Another tip is to utilize Facebook polls to find out what your community likes. So whether that's on um, on Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram, um, really utilize that poll function um, talking about what kind of flavors people like. You could even ask your followers what they want to see um, from your content. So do you want us to post recipes or do you want us to post offers, for example? Um, so that's a really, really um, useful tip. Um, LinkedIn videos perform really well. So I think we've mentioned this already, but um, nowadays the algorithms of all these social media channels are really kind of, they're really favoring videos over just imagery. So imagery is still really great to use, um, but we would recommend putting in a couple of videos within your content plans. Um, they don't have to be really polished or kind of, uh, done by any sort of videographer you can do selfie videos talking about your brand um you can do reels um that's something that we do on instagram and you can you can post them on facebook as well um mm. so yeah just videos perform really really well so that's definitely something to take into account um, and you'll notice that through your analytics um if you do post kind of let's say you post two videos one week and then none the likelihood is the two videos uh, the week that you post the two videos will perform the content will perform a lot better um, and then finally don't be afraid to be bold on linkedin and um, opinionated posts generally perform better so what we mean by this is not kind of getting into uh debates or anything like that but um giving kind of your own personal view this will be something for your own personal linkedin as well so if there is something like sustainability or a topic like that that you want to kind of put your personal opinion on and like what your company or brand's doing um in terms of sustainability that's what we mean by like that's what we mean by that um in terms of uh rather than just a sentence something like we believe um our company or i believe this um, mm -hmm. that generally performs really really well on linkedin definitely and then just to round all of that off like with all the tips we gave so if you're going to break your social media content into five posts a week break it down like this two about the brand products news etc two about the industry so you have industry updates world coconut day whatever it is and then one sort of off the cuff a team member birthday something on sustainability so so straight away, if you if you break down those five the, 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 those five posts into two about the brand, two about the industry, one general, you'll have so much content. Like you'll be able to plan a whole month's worth of content in about two hours because you know what you're you're talking about. If you've limited time for social media, would you recommend getting involved in TikTok and sticking to Facebook and LinkedIn? It really depends what your your goal is. 
if you're aiming for buyers, um, I would say focus on LinkedIn and Instagram. We didn't cover Instagram here because you're probably going to have another session on Instagram. Instagram is an amazing platform. You can do a million things with it. But we felt that because a lot of you are so familiar with it that we give you more insight into Facebook and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, and then Emily also has some questions that you guys should really be looking at like uh, every month. Yeah, definitely. So these questions are kind of questions to ask yourself about your social media content. So how well is your content performing? So this is looking at the analytics like we showed you for Facebook. Um, how many likes you're getting? Are people actually commenting on your posts? And if you aren't getting any likes and people aren't commenting on your posts, that probably means that you need to switch up your content or have a, a bit of a think about what different ideas that you could, could post that people might engage with more. So are you trying to build relationships with your community? Um, this is kind of, this is really, really important because a lot of the food, um, a lot of the food communities that we work with in terms of uh, different food brands, we notice how loyal they are. We, yes. I'd say um, food and drink is the, the kind of industry where the followers seem to be most loyal. Um, so they're always commenting, they're wanting to know when you're getting a new flavour, they're really, really interested in kind of, let's say they use your product every day, they want to know when you're, you're bringing new things out or what's happening with your brand. Um, so that's definitely a question to ask yourself. Are you posting at optimum times and frequency? So this is really dependent on um, where you're based and what your kind of followers are. Um, so we usually either do morning, afternoon um, and evening, but you can look online and look on your analytics as well to see when your followers are most likely to be online. Um, are you engaging with your peers on social? So this is, let's say you have your chocolate brand. Is there, does your friend have a company that you could do some cross promotion with, for example? So if you do a little shout out about them, they might do one about you. And that's really, really important. So you're not just posting about you all the time. Yeah. Um, are you celebrating your team members? So we've talked a lot about this. This is so important just to give people insight into who your team are and to let them know that there are real people behind the brand. Um, and then are you tagging the relevant people and businesses when you promote your business? So if you are talking about another company or a magazine, for example, make sure that you do tag them because the most likely is that they will share that as well. Um, and then that's just other people um, that follow them seeing your, um, your bit of PR or your posts, for example. Um, and then how much time do you spend planning and researching? This is important. Um, in terms of you don't have to spend lots of time in terms of there are apps, there are ways that you can do time saving things, for example, repurposing the content. We've spoken about that um, quite often. If we uh, create a bit of content for um, LinkedIn, for example, we will slightly adapt that for Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Um, so you're not having to post um, four different times. You're just using that one thing and slightly adapting the copy dependent on who you are targeting. And um, so there are lots of time saving things, but um, planning and researching a little bit kind of every month is probably a really good idea to do as well. 100%. Uh, so just some links for you guys. So Canva, you know about this already. So Quick App as well, guys, is just a really handy app that it will help you create videos from pictures, uh, little boomerangs and video clips, really straightforward. And we would just recommend going in and having a play around. Uh, the hashtag app that em Emily mentioned is HashMe. There's a link to it there. And then best times to post according to HubSpot. So just click on this link here. Now your analytics will tell you as well, but sometimes it's actually good to look at the global um, analytics of it and then try them out, see how you get on, look at the analytics and you're going to see there's a spike or a bit of a dip and then you'll know um, how best uh, your content is performing. And that's it. Um, so if there's any more questions, uh, is it advised to post more than six times a week. Um, not really, no. What we would say is if you if you are gonna if you do want to post more content, like maximum six times, but just boost some of that, promote some of that if you want more eyeballs on your page, spend ten dollars, twenty dollars a week. Um, but use Facebook blueprint. That's what will give you the ins and outs of doing it. 
Um, and Denise, can you convert a personal page to a LinkedIn business page? No, but you can connect a business page. You create the business page through your personal page, kind of like Facebook. Um, and keep both though, Denise, keep your brand on the business page is all about the brand and then keep your personal page as your personal page because that's where you can connect with people. Whereas your LinkedIn business page can't actually connect uh, to people, people can just follow it. And the great thing about LinkedIn guys is that uh, the new feature allows you to invite people who you've connected with to follow your business page. So if you connected with buyers or anyone, customers, potential investors, um, and you're sharing great content and they're engaging with it, invite them to follow your business page and share that content across there as well. Um, so if anybody, does anybody have any more questions? Uh, this is the last one from us. So we won't, we won't be seeing you guys again, um, but just want to thank you so much for your amazing participation. Um, we hope you've gotten value out of this. This is, this is why we're here doing this. And, and if you feel like we left out anything, do not hesitate to slide into our DMs on Instagram, email us, ask the team at Alliances for Action, and we'll be delighted to, to help. Thank you so much, Emma and um, Emily. I see that Adrian has his hand raised. I'm not sure if he has, I spent a message asking that he posted in the Q&A, so I'm not sure if he did. Oh, um, I think I've just allowed him to talk there. Okay, one second. Oh, Adrian, yes, that I love that question. Yeah, Adrian, Let's, go ahead. Okay, the question came through. Um, I, I believe that I promote many brands. And sometimes when I'm working with cybersecurity companies, they're seemingly very, very, very cautious, even about posting one picture. However, they really want to get themselves out there. So how can they get themselves out there without endangering their cybersecurity? Thanks. I would say the best thing to do with that is employee advocacy, sending the team out on specific team days or anything that the teams can talk about they're doing, not mentioning anything about a product or a service. Employee advocacy is going to be the biggest thing to get that company out there, hands down. We actually worked with them, a tobacco company a couple of years ago and we helped them with this. Because the problem with tobacco is that um, I don't smoke or anything, don't endorse any of that, but... But um, the, the problem that they were having, Adrian, was any time they posted, they were putting themselves at risk as well. Like they were saying, oh, no, but we've got so many people talking to us about smoking. And, you know, and, and what they did was they invested a lot of their profits into, 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 parts, that, into, par into parts of the world that really, really needed investment. The employees went over. So however best the cybersecurity can either repatriate or reinvest a tiny amount of what they're doing into the team or into an, an initiative, that would definitely be the best way to get them out there. Because it's not them talking about how great they are. It's their employees talking about what they're doing. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you, Adrian. So thank you um, again. Amar and Emily from Digital Works Agency. Um, bang on time, it's 12 o'clock, um, at least for us here in Barbados. Um, so I just wanted to thank you all for your continued engagement. Uh, we have launched a, a feedback form. So we would really appreciate your, your, your what, a few minutes if you, if you give us your feedback on, on the session today. Um, this is session five, we have four more sessions upcoming. So if you tune in every Thursday at this time, um, of course, you'll be getting other little nuggets on, on digital strategy, social media, etc. So today we focused on social media for marketing, and you can expect similar content um, with regard to another feature of, of digital strategy in the coming weeks. So we just want to thank you so much on behalf of the International Trade Center Alliances for Action, Caribbean Export Development Agency funded by the EU, the OACPS, CARI Forum, the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. We just want to thank you so much for your time. Thanks, folks. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>